Good evening. Welcome to the Shadow Trader Video Weekly for Sunday, March 18th, 2012. Uh, last week I talked about possible hanging man formation. I mean, it was a hanging man formation saying that if we went down, um, you know, we could violate this tail. Obviously, market has not shown any signs of backing off just yet. Um, I want to show you a little indicator here uh, that some traders look at. This was actually... Um, some guys at the bus station turned me on to this. There were some dudes sitting there with their laptop, and um, they were like, hey, man, you ever look at, like, the S&P over the VIX, you know, and, like, over a long period of time? And uh, I was thinking about it, and I was like, yeah, S&P over VIX. So this is the S&P divided by the VIX. So right now the S&P is 1404, the VIX is 1447, so the... That is uh, 9704, right? The quotient, that's the word I was looking for, right? So if you look at this historically, right? Look at it on the daily here, right? You see, you would think that it needs to contract because the S&P over the VIX has gotten really high. But what I want to show you is, look, if you stay on the weekly, look at this. This is where it was resistant before. You can see here where the market started to sell off hard, right? Look at look at this time period here. This is... Uh, April 25th, 11. And we'll keep it on S&P here, right? And look at April here, right? That's where the market topped out. And after that, it never got higher than that for a while, right? We went much, much lower and we had the big August sell-off. So as an indicator, it's pretty good, right? However, notice that to me, at least technically looking at this, it is absolutely ignoring that last resistance point. If we look at a monthly to me, this pattern does not indicate that we're going to back off from here. Now, obviously, this is just one indicator. I just thought this would be of interest to you. You know, I would just, I was just recently turned on to this, and I thought, you know, this, this actually makes some sense, so we should look at this. Like, to me, when the reversal, when you have a V-shaped pattern like this, and you race back up very quickly, that does not imply to me that you fall back down. So at least according to this indicator, it feels to me that the market has some more legs in it. Now, in studying the market daily, looking at the ES and market internals and the profile and everything, I would have to say that I tend to agree with what I think the S&P over the VIX indicator is telling me uh, because the market is just not showing any signs of backing off. Obviously, last Friday uh, was options expiry, so wasn't expecting much. You can see the, the little candle there on the Friday's action on the spider, not much happening. But all in all, we're constantly just building value higher. Um, internals are relatively strong, so nothing seems to be backing off it. It doesn't seem like we're gonna like it's gonna happen yet. Uh, another really simple thing that I look at is just simply days up. Usually market will move on an odd day. So you have your one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this rally has been eight days now and pretty much almost every day except this one here, you have made a higher high. So you just had one day of pause here on the 12th. So I would think that we don't back off just yet. So I'm expecting a little bit uh, higher prices. All right, that being said, some things that are on my radar right now. If you're following me on Twitter, the address is at the beginning of this video, and you should be. I'm constantly putting out uh, trade ideas there, uh, usually in the middle of the trading day as they come to me. CME, I really like. Um, this stock is just showing amazing relative strength. If you look at the weekly here, this is kind of... Uh, bullish engulfment here. Candles lining up same size bodies, but very bullish. And it just feels to me like the stock really wants to move. I mean, Friday, the action was extremely bullish, even when the market was doing nothing. Stock rallied hard, ended up closing almost unchanged, but this is still just fine here. Um, I drew this trend line in two different ways. And originally, I had drawn this one here, which comes out to here. And then I realized later that, you know, note that if you connect these two, it comes right to where price turned around. So anyway, it just feels to me that when you have a number of days down like this, as I always say, like look at this high point here where the hard selling started on increase in volume. See how that open is 289.68, so let's call it 290. Once the stock rallies back to that point and is able to clear that 290, which it did in Friday's action, um, I, I tend to feel that the sellers are shut off. This is a pattern that I talk about a lot. It's called I call it sell sellers being shut off when very bearish events are then taken back by very bullish events. And to me, this 290 here is an important line in the sand because 
basically the stock needed to wash out these sellers. There was heavy selling here as we fell out of consolidation, but really all that was happening was you were just correcting back to ascending trend line and then rallying from there. So anyway, I'm bullish on CME. I think the stock sees 300 soon. I think I think we move back up at the very least to this resistance area, which is just under there, right? And if you look at where the 300 is sitting, it's a nice round number. Stocks tend to gravitate towards those levels and get pulled there like a magnet. Notice that you traded on both sides of 300 lots of times here. When you had your final rally before the sell-off into August, where did you stop? 300. So it's a key area in the stock. So I think that we probably go there over the coming week. Uh, Apple is seriously on my radar uh, now with all this bullish action in it because I do think that there's going to be a blow-off top, which hasn't happened yet. And the stock actually will be higher uh, by the end of the year. Um, I have a trend line drawn there, which is pretty simple to see that support is at 550. I like the 550 also because of the prior high. Again, if you're following me on Twitter, you'll see that I have a broken wing butterfly on the put side right now that is 555, 550, 540, which I initiated for a 35 cent credit. That will only be worth more than 35 cents. Well, I mean, it's a credit anyway. I mean, I received a credit, so I don't need to make anything in order for it to be profitable. It can just go out worthless. But uh, in order for this to be, that spread to be worth, say, a dollar or something that I would like to sell it at, I am going to need Apple to pull back a little. I do feel that the support at this level is very, very strong. So hence, I'm, that's why I was in, initiating the broken wing butterfly at uh, 555, 555, 40. So if we do get a pullback, I'll be watching that area very, very closely. Over the coming week, Amazon, also on the radar. Very interesting symmetrical triangle forming on the stock, plus bottoming tail hammer on the weekly. Breakout of this pattern, I think, should send the stock to the upside. Uh, I do like the volume pattern. Notice that as the triangle has been tightening, and as I always say, I do like a nice tight triangle. As it has been tightening, you have... Lower volume here, lower volume, lower volume. Look at the red candles. Smaller, and then the, the bullish days, bigger, bigger, bigger. Smaller, smaller, bigger, smaller, bigger, bigger. So I like the pattern here in Amazon. Breakout, the entry is obviously over the downtrend line, so you've got to give it about 25, 50 cents over this area. And stop, I would say, if it does that, is going to be probably under this hammer because once you break out of the pattern, you shouldn't go too deep back into the pattern, maybe just a tiny bit but uh, certainly not below the low of the pullback there. And the last one I want to show you is one that we don't talk about very often. Uh, the makers of my laptop, which I love very much. Hi. That's, um, that's me waving at my laptop. It's over there. Um, look at Hewlett Packard on the daily. This is a typical pattern to me that frustrates bears. You would be thinking this is a bear flag and the next move is here. Right? So you see like a whole bunch of traders en masse putting the the uh, the cobra fang on it going down, down, right? Those of you that have been listening to Shadow Chair for a long time, you know what the cobra fang is, right? But in reality, I think the stock wants to put the Colombian on it, throw its pen at the keyboard, and go, go out, go out, right? That's what I think is, is, is more than likely going to happen here because it's very typical that you have these bear flags that they don't follow through. And what happens is it's like the textbook pattern. See, this is what they show you in the books about trading, but it never works. They'll, they'll, say, they'll say, look, it's bear flag and it's consolidating at the lows. So your short entry is here. And then, you know, if you're wrong, your stop is here or whatever. And then the stock makes like a false breakdown and goes shoom, up like this. I've just seen this happen too many times. Um, so this is a stock I'd be interested in actually to the upside. The other way you can think about it psychologically is that it should be going down. It should be going lower, but it's not, and it just refuses to go lower. So little by little, if it goes higher, it'll eventually build momentum, and then you'll see rally to say, you know, at least somewhere in this point. Now, I'm not 100% guaranteeing that's when it's going to happen, but that's what I think is the scenario it's going to play out, and I will be willing in the coming week to take a position in HBQ uh, if I continue to see this strength here on the sideways action develop, certainly over this line here on some volume, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All right, that's all the time I have for today. Hope you guys are having a wonderful weekend. On behalf of myself and the entire Shadow Trader team here in beautiful Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, I wish you good trading and good night. Remember, check out the forum, check out the blog. We had our first ever options expiry uh, Friday Options Expiry concert series with Joanna Pasidi, and I've got video of that uh, in the forum. Great show that was on Friday afternoon, and we're going to be doing that uh, live in the studio 
on the Squawk Box every month. All right, see ya.